Welcome to another episode of Here's Why with Mark and Eric. So Mark, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Why is there incredible power related to content and someone's personal brand? Well, as human beings, we're drawn to other human beings. It's just a fact of the way that we're made up. Uh, in fact, look at this picture of this building. Now, what do you see? You see a face. You can't help but see a face. Scientists call this pareidolia. It's the tendency of us to see human faces even when they aren't there. We're drawn to people before we're drawn to faceless things like a brand logo or corporate name. Uh, another example of that is Google authorship. Even though that's gone now, during the time it was in the search results, it was very powerful because you'd see a face like this one and you're kind of drawn to that. You want to connect with that content because you, you think there's a real person behind that. So how can brands use personal brand power to their advantage? Well, again, it's important to realize that just it's just a human factor, that we're drawn to people and we trust people long before we'll trust a faceless brand. And that's something, once you understand that as a brand, you should really be taking advantage of. Now, I need to acknowledge that there's a fear factor here. Brands are afraid of doing this. Uh, back when I used to give regular talks at conferences about Google authorship, the number one question, in fact, I could guarantee in the Q&A every time, somebody would say, we're, we're kind of afraid of putting real people out there because we don't know what they might say or they might represent us the wrong way or what if they leave eventually. And in fact, I heard this so often that I wrote a, a major piece for Moz, we've got linked below, about why you need to overcome that fear. But you know, I think in one way, Eric, goes back to the days of the, what I call the Mad Men days, uh, you know, in the 60s, the days of advertising, when, when brands, there were only a very few outlets for messaging to the public, and brands would typically could control that message. You can't do that anymore. People talk to people. And instead of being afraid of that, instead of trying to control that in the old way, I think we need to break out of that fear and find ways to do it. Find ways to say, we're going to promote real people who people will identify with our brand. And I think that the, the advantages of doing that way outweigh the perceived risks in that. And just as a final word, I think you and I are good examples of that. You know, we've done that here for Stone Temple Consulting. Um, Eric built the whole business here on his personal brand initially, going out, speaking at conferences, producing co uh, content, guest posting, doing interviews, and, and then brought me in because I do the same thing. And people get to know us. They trust us. They identify with us. And the, eventually the association comes around that these are people I want to do business with, so I want to do business with that brand. So those are great tips, Mark. Thanks for that. Uh, as Mark mentioned, we're going to show in the uh, below here the links to the various things that we've referred to during this video. And thanks for watching this episode of Here's Why.